Hey there guys, I am the Six Machine and welcome back to another Warhammer video. With Grey Knights and Thousand Suns on the way, it seems as though, as we usually do, some leaks have started to appear from the newly reboxed 9th edition kits, which show off a smattering of the rules and profiles for people to get started with their new shiny models. And the latest little leaks we've got are for the Grey Knights, who seem to be getting something of a very welcome buff from the little tease that we have so far. So let's dive in and see what's coming for the Grey Knights in their upcoming codex. In terms of the profile itself, we know from the newest chapter approved which came along recently that the points cost for the regular Grey Knight Marines is up to 22 points from the 20 that you can see on your screen now. And for that extra two points, you gain quite a lot. Whilst they keep the regular staple of three plus to hit in both ranged and melee, and the strength and toughness four, they finally get that much appreciated bump to two wounds in line with regular marines. And on top of that, their attacks get a very hefty increase from one each to an incredible three per model. And unlike regular marines, this is actually one higher than what they get and on the face of it, in my opinion, seems to imply that the Astartes Shock Assault rule will stay with the quote unquote regular marines, whilst the Grey Knights will just get it baked into their profile, being three attacks at all times. And when you think about it, this is actually quite a big buff compared to the Shock Assault rule, because they will get it even as they are stuck in ongoing combats, it's not reliant on them getting off a charge or being charged by your opponent, you will just have those three attacks all the time, no matter what. And so even just by looking at that profile increase, the jump from 20 points to 22 points per model seems to be a really, really good price. But on top of that, we have also seen some of the weapon profiles which you will be able to use with these guys on the battlefield. And as we've seen throughout 9th edition in general, there are a few tasty updates and changes to the weapon stat lines as well. First up, we have the Humble Stormbolter, which actually hasn't had any changes at all, but that is fine because these are the basic loadout for your Grey Knights, which actually, when you think about it, just makes their 22 point cost even more impressive when you compare them to regular Marines, as these guys will be getting four shots in half range. And obviously, depending on whether they keep bolter discipline in some way as a rule, even at a full 24 inches if they've stayed still. But realistically, the special weapons and war gear is where the real fun is. And so at the cost of not only swapping out your Storm Bolter, but also your Nemesis Four Sword, these are some of the other pieces of war gear that your Grey Knights can take. First up, we have the Incinerator, which has the new and improved 12 inch range flamer profile. It keeps the same strength six and minus one AP, which it had before, but with this better range is now seriously scary as an option, being able to put a good number of automatic hits into enemy units from a very solid range. And I think this will undoubtedly be a great pick if you know that you're going up against a lot of Tyranids or Guard or even the new Toughness 5 Orcs, as you will still be wounding on threes with that strength six profile. The Silencer has kept the six shot profile that it had before and gained a point of AP, turning it into a strength four minus one AP gun at 24 inches. It has unfortunately dropped down from D3 damage as it currently is to the much less impressive one damage. So for me, I would say this is actually a tiny bit worse and at the cost of swapping out not only your Storm Bolter, but also your Four Sword, I honestly can't see this being taken too much. It is better than a Storm Bolter for sure, but it's not that much better. And I just think that having that extra melee profile with the sword in addition to your Storm Bolter is much, much more useful for the squad than swapping it out for the Silencer. The Psy Cannon, on the other hand, has had a pretty nice little buff. It lost a shot, admittedly, but it's kept that very nice Strength 7 minus 1 AP profile, and it has had a very welcome bump from 1 damage to a flat 2 damage. So it's very much a buffed heavy bolter for the Grey Knights now, and it will be much, much better at taking out two wound opponents, as well as chipping off damage from Toughness 6 and Toughness 7 vehicles that you may come across on the board. 
So I can honestly see this as the go-to generic upgrade for your Grey Knight squad if you want to give them a heavy weapon. It gives you some pretty solid anti-infantry as well as some fairly decent light armor firepower to your strike squad. Or of course if you fill a purgation squad with four side cannons you can do a huge amount of work taking out things like Drukari Venoms and Raiders and that kind of tier vehicle. On the melee weapons front, which I will be honest with you, with their new and improved three attacks is where I would personally look to kit out my Grey Knight squads generally, things are also looking fairly decent. Although, once again, we start off with a slight nerf. Bringing them in line with the Marine versions, the Nemesis Demon Hammer has now lost a pip of AP, bringing it in line with the strength times two, minus two AP, three damage Thunder Hammers that the regular Astartes have. But on the flip side, with those three attacks base per model now, I still think this is going to be a very valid option to bring some impressive anti-tank and anti-heavy infantry melee prowess to your army. And a Grey Knight Marine or Judicia with a Nemesis Demon Hammer will 100% bring a lot of hurt to anything that tries to stand in his way. The Falchion has kept its strength user minus two AP, but has also dropped from D3 damage to a flat one damage. So this is of course again quite a significant nerf, but to counter this, according to the latest chapter approved, this is now a free weapon swap down from two points, so you are getting this for slightly cheaper. And it's also worth mentioning now actually, that aside from the Demon Hammer, which is 10 points, and the Psy Cannon, which is five points down from seven, all of the other weapon options are free swaps for the squad now. So the cost increase of the models also has to take that into account and essentially the squad is going to be able to swap and mix and match weapon options much more easily and much more cheaply than you currently can. And it's also worth noting that the Falchion currently has a rule where you get one extra attack if you have two of them and I will be honest I will be completely shocked if this doesn't get the lightning claw style rule where they now give an extra attack per falchion. So this could end up giving your Grey Knight a whopping five attacks, which in my opinion makes that drop from D3 damage to one much, much better, especially if you know that you are going to be using them specifically for cleaving through hordes of enemies like Gaunts or Guardsmen. The Nemesis Force Halberd has had a very welcome buff from its strength plus one minus two AP D3 damage profile to a much, much more reliable strength plus two minus two AP flat two damage, which gives it some incredible potential for taking out Marines and other two wound profiles, as well as being slightly better now that it swings at strength six for taking out things like Custodes, the new Orcs, and even toughness three targets like the previously mentioned Gaunts and Guardsmen. Likewise to that, the Force Sword has seen a significant improvement, much like we saw with the Blade Guard Veteran Master Crafted Power Swords, and has swapped from Strength User, minus three AP D3 damage, to that much nicer plus one strength, minus three AP flat two damage. And honestly, this is just a flat out upgrade in my opinion. The switch to plus one strength and also gaining that reliability of two damage really does help you to figure out what target to aim your squad at and what weapons you need to take in which situation. I think personally, the removal of all the D3 damage to flat damage two or damage one is honestly overall a big improvement for the squad. And it means that you know now that you won't be overkilling by rolling three damage against say a guardsman or run the risk of doing one damage to a marine and not quite killing him. Finally, the Nemesis Warding Stave has gained a point of strength, bringing it to strength plus three and then retained its minus one AP, but like the other weapons, switched to a flat two damage. Obviously, we don't have all the weapon special rules in this little preview sheet here, but I would be surprised if the five up invulnerable save provided by the stave wasn't kept, at least in some similar fashion, perhaps maybe slightly changed. I could see it going the way of the storm shields and giving something like a flat six up invuln, but then also plus one to your armor save or something like that. But as always, we will have to wait and see what kind of rules it actually comes with when the Warhammer community reveals start to be shown off. So that's it for the leaks we have seen so far for the Grey Knights, some pretty big bumps to the profile of the models themselves, and then some really quite nice reliability buffs to the weapons 
that the squad can take, all for a very, very slight increase of just two points per model. And so overall, I think the Humble Grey Knight squad is going to be not only very customizable and adaptable, but also incredibly solid at shooting and genuinely quite terrifying if you load it out for melee. But what do you think of these changes that we've seen on this leaked datasheet? Do you like the look of them so far? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me. But until next time, I will catch you later, guys.